Okay, today's the last day that we're going to take a look at a quadratic uh, equation or a function. So reading at the top it says you now have a large variety of ways to solve a quadratic equation or polynomial equations whose highest power term is to the second power. These techniques including factoring, completing the square, and quadratic formula. In each application it is essential that the equation we are solving is equal to zero. If it isn't, then some minor manipulations must be needed. Because remember, when we're solving, I'm just going to draw a picture up here. So we'll say my curve is right here in red. And here's a quadratic equation graph, the parabola. When you're solving, you're looking for where it crosses the x-axis, the roots. And there's typically two roots, but it may only cross once, or it may not cross at all, and there's uh, no real roots. We'll talk more about that. Um, but here, anywhere here, um, on the x-axis, your y value is always zero. So that's why when we solve, we want the y equal to zero. So let's start by reviewing factoring, because it's been a while. We want the x squared positive. So I'm going to subtract the 8x and then add the 2, all in one step so it's less writing. So I'm solving by using inverse operations. And then I combine them over here, or stack them with their like term. So we end up with x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Because that cancels, that cancels, or has a sum of 0. So now, factoring, we look at the expression is there a greatest common factor? There's not. So we set up our two sets of parentheses. We're looking for the factors of 10. So this number right here that's last. So that's 1 times 10, 2 times 5. I'm going to write that twice. Now the reason is, is because they have to add to this negative 3. So, and if they multiply and you get a negative 10, the signs are different. So it can be positive 1, negative 10, positive 2, negative 5, or switched. Negative 1, positive 10, negative 2, positive 5. They all now multiply to a negative 10. But I needed to add to a negative 3, which would be this combination right here. So it's x and x, right, to get the x squared, then plus 2 minus and remember, you can always check that you're right. A trick on the calculator. You type in your trinomial, so x squared minus 3x minus 10, and then underneath you type your factors. So we have x plus 2, x minus 5, graph. If the second graph goes right over the top of the first graph, then you have it factored correctly. And we could see that happening here. Good. So now, once you've factored, you take each factor and set it equal to zero. Solve it for x. So x equals negative 2, x equals 5. And if we go back to the graph, we can see that it does cross the x-axis at negative 2 and 5. Good. So those answers are right. Now we're going to solve by completing the square. So again, x squared is positive. I want to add the 3x over, subtract the 4 to get it set equal to 0. So it's x squared minus 12x plus 20 equals 0. Now when we solve using completing the square, we want to move the c, add the boxes. So comes x squared minus 12x, add the box, move the c, becomes negative, add the box, and then in the box, half of 12 is 6, then 6 times 6, 36. So on the right side, we get 16. The left side, when we factor, no GCF, x, x. When well, multiplies to 36, adds to a negative 12, and remember it must be the same number as negative 6, negative 6. We rewrite it as x minus 6 squared equals 16. So then we can solve by using the inverse operations or by taking the square root. 
So we end up with x minus 6 equals 4. Now, remember, we don't want to forget that plus minus 4. So finish by adding the 6 to solve for x. Then we get x equals, remember I like to slide the 6 first, 6 plus or minus 4. So one answer is x equals 6 plus 4, or 10. The other answer is 6 minus 4, which is 2. So I'll write my answers this time in a solution set, 2 and 10. All right, so of the two at the bottom, which one do we want to do? Well, the one on the left says to solve using the nearest tenth, the harder ones in simplest radical form, so let's do that one. So I'm going to add 2x, subtract 7, add 2x, subtract 7. So we get x squared plus 6x minus 5 equals cancel, cancel, 0. So a quadratic formula, since we're skipping this one, is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm not a singer. <laughs> all right, so our a is a 1. Our b is a 6. And our c is a negative 5. So we get x equals, draw the line, negative 6 plus or minus the square root extend that. Um, 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 5. Extend it even more. 2 times 1. So now let's type all that in because we've got to leave it as a radical, not the decimal. So 6 squared minus 4 parenthesis 1 parenthesis negative 5. So it ends up being negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 56 all over um, 2 times 1, 2. Now 56, if we're looking at the perfect square just under 56 is 49, which is not going to 56. Then 36, no. 25, no. So 56 divided by 16, no. 9 is the next largest one. And then 4. Bingo. So 56 I'll write it above, is the square root of 4 times the square root of 14. So this becomes negative 6 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2 radical 14 over 2. Now we divide both of these terms by the 2. So our final answer, negative 6 over 2 is negative 3, plus or minus the 2's cancel, square root of 14. Good. Now I just want to touch upon some things on the back, but as far as solving, we are done. So let's look at exercise two, and I have shortened it a little bit. So we have our three methods for solving a quadratic, completing the square, factoring, quadratic formula. Those are all the tools in your tool belt. I like this example because it goes back to review vertex form. So we have a quadratic equation graphed here. It's not telling us what it is, but it wants us to identify what the h and k would be. Well, the h and k are right here, h comma k, where the vertex is. So this point right here is your h, k. So if we note the coordinates, we go right to up one, two, three, four. The point is two, four. So we know that our 2, 4, h is 2, k is 4, and then I just want us to rewrite the equation by making the substitution. So since I said equation, it would be in y equals form. Function form is f of x. So x minus the h, which is a 2 squared, plus k, which is a 4. And remember our transformations. This is the function, right, with a minus 2 quadratic function. When you have the negative 2 in the inside, it's the opposite shift, so we want to think left. But from here, so you're always starting at the origin, we are going right to, good, and then the plus 4 means up 4.
awesome. All right, lastly, and this will be quick. If you think of the graphs of parabolas, they can certainly miss the x-axis. So if the graph misses the x-axis, when this happens graphically, then we will solve for the zeros algebraically. So when we can't see where it crosses, right, um, if I still have that one on my calculator, yeah, we can see it crosses here at negative 2, and I think it was 5 then those are the solutions. But if we can't see where it crosses, can't just look at a graph, we have to do it by hand, okay? And when it doesn't graph, cro or cross the x-axis, when we graph it, when we look at those solutions algebraically, right, we won't be able to find any real solutions, okay? Next year in Algebra 2, you'll see the called um, imaginary ones. So what I did below is, it says which of the following three quadratic functions has no real solution, so we need to determine. But we're also going to determine in our notes if the roots are rational or irrational. So I solved all of these using the quadratic formula. And then I want us to go through and to evaluate, and we're going to look at the decimals. Okay, so let's clear our calculator. Type the whole thing in using the fraction bar. So it'll be negative 7, plus 3, radical 5, all over 2 is one root. So one solution is negative 0 0.14589803338. And remember, just go back up and grab it, a little trick, bring it down and change that plus in the middle in the numerator to a minus. So the other root is negative 6.8541019666. So we started, so here are our roots. We started the unit talking about rational and irrational. Rational numbers repeat, they terminate. Okay? These do not terminate, these do not repeat, these are irrational roots. Okay, go to the middle one, let's type that in. So fraction negative 2 plus the square root of a negative number. Can we do that? No, and it even says non-real answer. Let's go to that, try changing the negative sign. If I just change it to subtraction, does it still matter? No, because... We can't take the square root of negative numbers. So these are non-real solutions. Non-real. Okay, you can say not real. And then the last one. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of that. Fraction bar negative 2 plus the square root. So remember, that's what I get when I do the quadratic formula. Now to take a look at the decimals, oh, we get a fraction, three-fifths. But I can go to math and change the decimal, which is 0 0.6. That terminates, but I'm also writing it as a ratio. Go back up and grab it, change that plus to a minus, and we get negative 1. So as a decimal, that would be negative 1.0. These are terminating decimals, but again, this is a ratio, so this means they are rational. Okay? So you may have to, once you're done doing the quadratic formula, so I did that up to this point. There's that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a form. You see that form, they solved it using quadratic formula, okay? And then from there, you may have to classify your roots. If it's the square of a negative number, that's a red flag, you have non-real solutions. And that's it.